So today we are coming back to talk about RAM Note. It has just released an update 1.4. It is amazing and I'm going to show you exactly how to use it. I'm going to show you how to use RAM Note to study. Not just for the exams, but as a whole, as a learning process. Let's go. Today we will be listening to, or I will be listening to Tendinopathy podcast. So this is what I'm looking at. So you could easily search for this and listen it as well. So I'm going to be taking some notes and I'll explain to you and walk you through my process. Let me run through with you what is actually going on today. Tendinopathy is the inflammation of the tendons, put it simply. Um, tendons are the little white part that's connected to the muscle bulk. The patella tendon, which is over here, is the little tendon, is the tendon below your kneecap. So this is your kneecap and this is the patella tendon. Patella tendinopathy, it's almost exclusively to young jumping athletic males. Um, tendons don't like change, so progressive loading is key. How do we organize this? So some people may see, ah, patella tendinopathy is something that people might want to use. So they would just link it up like that. I don't actually do this. The reason is because I already have a huge knowledge base on patella tendinopathy that I've been learning throughout the years. So there is a lot of things that I have already written. So instead, what I would do is just portal it in. Yeah, there we go. So now my entire patella tendinopathy page is here which means anything that I edit over here on the right would also be reflected on the left. So let's get rid of that. Patella tendinopathy, let's see what is worth looking at. So these two parts are very important. So patella tendinopathy is almost exclusively to young jumping athletic male. Let's see where can this fit most likely it doesn't fit in anywhere. Yeah, so I think this goes under epidemiology. So I would just drag this in here because it makes sense that patella tendinopathy is almost exclusively to young jumping athletic males. So one part is that um, a lot of jumping sports is mainly dominated by males. Also, males tend to do very silly things and start jumping off places where we shouldn't and causing a lot of stress on our tendons. So this is, is just pure statistic. Just based on this, let me just cut that out. It seems like that belongs under some sort of treatment, um, but it doesn't belong to any particular protocol. So all these different protocols are very specific and they are all science-based. So if I were to go into any one of them, again, they're, they're all science-based. It is based on literature. This is the evidence to support that doing these exercises are the best way that you can quickly return back to sports. Yeah, I think it makes sense. So um, I'll create a principle and heavyweight protocol is good. However, it requires double click. Yeah, so I think this fits in perfectly. So now you must be wondering, like, what's the point of all of this? Like, why didn't I just do this from the start? Why did I bother taking notes separately just to dump it in here? And how does this actually help? Like, I had to think, does this belong anywhere? See, it forces me to open up different, different parts. Um, surgery may not be something that I can do. I am not, I'm not, I'm not trained to cut someone open. By going through all of this, I am actually doing some sort of revision. I realized that, how huh, okay, once again, there are four stages to the exercise protocol and there is literature on it. So now that I've written everything in here and I close this up, I, I don't see my notes anymore. So this is another magic of REM note. You see, I want this, this one line to be under patella tendinopathy, but I also want it to be in this note. Copy this as a portal out, that one line. I'm, I'm gonna go back to my physio treatment and copy this one line out as well. So shift command E, copies the link as a portal. Now I pull those two out. Basically I pulled this, so these two are connected, right? So if I type something here, it would appear there as well. Now I no longer need patella tendinopathy here because I am not studying specifically patella tendinopathy. 
So what I would do is just delete the portal. Now when I click on this, I see that this heavyweight protocol is good, but I have no idea what it is. But by clicking onto it, I see it's a portal, which is also indicated here with this blue line, that it is under patella tendinopathy, physio treatment, and it's a principle that heavyweight protocol is good. However, requires double legged. Same thing here, when I click on this, I see patella tendinopathy is, oh, it's an epidemiology. So um, it is almost exclusively to young jumping athletic male. This is talking about tendinopathy. So same thing, again, tendinopathy. Hmm, I realize that this fits under tendinopathy. I can just cut, paste it into tendinopathy. And I realize that I actually want all of this information in today's reading. So, I will paste this here. So as I am learning more about tendinopathies and I'm learning more about patella tendinopathies, I am able to keep my notes written out here while also simultaneously adding more knowledge into patella tendinopathy. So there's multiple things that is being talked about. So it actually belongs under the podcast. So when I come back, and I want to look at what I learned from this particular podcast. I can see everything that I have learned, but everything that I have learned is also stored and added into my already built knowledge base. When I'm here, I will be able to see everything that I've learned before, but I do not want to revise everything here. I already know. So this means that I just need to focus on my new knowledge. So looking at critical care, we can see in lecture one, I learned something called manual hyperinflation. So I've only learned three things. The item itself, three things to look out for, and its operational values. Now that isn't a lot, that's very simple. And that's cause it's the basics. And that's in lecture one. So this, this is in week one and lecture four. So in week four, we actually go deeper into it. So we learn more about manual hyperinflation. So the problem now is if I were to write new things about MHI, it will all be siloed here and separated from what I've learned in week one. So what do I do? I take MHI and portal it over here as well. So both of these, both of these are now linked. So in lecture four, I learn way more things. I learn about the indications. I learn about the comparison between ACBT and MHI. So there's a whole bunch of other things that I'm learning and it's really, really interesting. The best part is that I can see in week one, I only learned three things. In lecture four, week four, I learned a whole bunch of other things. And what I have done is just add all of them together. By adding all of them together, I am consistently adding into concepts. So when I'm revising, I'm not revising just a lecture. I am going to revise the concepts. I can go into MHI as its own page and I'm able to revise week one and four at the same time practice all cards. So what are the indications? So these are the six indications. We improve VQ, lung compliance, oxygenation. These are all things that are very, very important. And I'm not going to mess around with it yet because if I mess around with it, then the space repetition is going to be messed up. And I, I actually need to revise this because I forgot. So that's all I have today. This is how I use RamNote. I hope you found it useful. And if you do, subscribe. And soon you will see more videos on how to use RemNote, MarginNote, and especially Notion. So see you next time.